Good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, we're going to move into our presentation for the afternoon. And I'm very pleased to introduce Steve and Susie Jones. Um, Mr. Jones is the president of the American Rose Society and carries other titles that I'm not going to recall <laughs> <laughs> the way I Just as well. I'm an man. So we're going to be treated to sort of an extraordinary display, I believe. And just as with Dan, we'll, we'll continue this vicarious uh, experience of viewing beautiful landscapes, rose gardens, roses, and <coughs> all the other things that are going to come with it. So I'm going to conclude and just introduce Steve and Susie Jones. Well, we have kind of a tag team here set up. That way you don't have to listen to me the whole time. Now, we had a great opportunity to uh, attend the World Federation Regional Meeting in Adelaide, Australia. So looking for any excuse to go travel to Australia, New Zealand, and wherever else. It didn't take a lot of pulling on my arm, so um, as you can see, though, it is quite a trip. You know, here's LA, and it's a 15-hour flight, go across to Sydney, Adelaide is over here, <coughs> a little bit. and we also did New Zealand and Tahiti for fun, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, we only took 1,500 pictures, so we'll try to get through all of them. <laughs> I said, I do have two and a half hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> the game starts at five. <laughs> okay, when we flew into uh, Australia, what I did in my pen, um, we came into Sydney, had a heck of a time, because you have to go from international over to domestic. If you ever fly, and you have to go to domestic flights, make sure you're there for at least three hours. We had about an hour and a half, almost two hour layover, and the domestic terminal was a mile away. Oh, oh, Plus the line to get on the shuttle was about, oh, 100,000 people long, because they have a bad habit. When all the international flights come into Sydney, they come in from all over the world at the same time, because they don't want their customs people sitting around all day doing nothing. <laughs> So oh, yeah, it's pretty hectic. Uh, basically, I'll give you a little bit of about the trip where we basically we came into Sydney, changed planes, went to Adelaide, which is the convention. Uh, right here is the Barbarossa Valley for those familiar with wines, the best wines, some of the best wines on earth. Um, and being our tip a uh, typical type of traveler, we like to see everything fast. We don't spend a lot of time, but we want to see what it is we like to do first. So we go here, a couple days to 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 here, and we went out. So you're going to get a little bit of a whirlwind turn. Okay. Now even though Steve said it was a 15 hour flight to get to Australia, from the time we left home to the time we reached the hotel was 30 hours. Yeah. I wanted to take a nap. He said, no, we can't do that. So <laughs> off we go. Uh, what you see here is the Adelaide Festival Center where they put on plays and concerts. As we took a walk, we were actually heading to the gardens. This is the uh, river walk, which was just beautiful. This is probably one of my favorite pictures because when Steve took it, it kind of looks like the swan is dancing. So, so we call it the black dancing swan. Now, all on the river here, they have a one section, which I was a, kind of a little disappointed in, but it, this is the Heritage Rose Garden. And it stretches all the way up and down. You can see the river over here to the left. And it stretches all the way across. And you can see they have plantings up above and down below. Once again, a lot of uh, kind of like what we have, teas, chinas. But very few of them were marked. And uh, it was a little under disrepair. but. Uh, it was still beautiful nonetheless. When, when were you there? When, oh. uh, last October and November. We took just slightly so under a month. Spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're spring. They're so spring. I think we left October 20th, got back November 14th. So. Yeah. 
Um, this is the governor's mansion, which happened to be right across from our hotel. Really spectacular place. And this is uh, St. Peter's Cathedral. Now, one really spectacular thing about Australia, most of you have probably heard about, is the birds. They're gorgeous and they're everywhere. You just walk and this is what you see. Uh, this is a black and white magpie lark. Oh, oh. 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 And this is a rainbow, they call this a rainbow lorikeet. Wow. We had to look all these up when we got home. <laughs> and this is a green rosella. And again, this was during our walks. We just saw them up in the trees, so that was pretty pretty spectacular. Uh, Adelaide has quite a few rose gardens. Actually, they have a lot of gardens in general, but uh, everywhere you go, you're going to see the British style of planting, usually mass plantings, one type of rose. This is the Vale Gardens, and you can kind of see, oops, the wrong switch there. You can see just the mass plantings of different colors there. This is the uh, Sarah Lippman Garden. It's just a small, nice little garden in the, in the honor of the lady, I believe. She was the first city council person in Adelaide back many years ago. <coughs> the Pennington Garden. Mm. Um, the city is also known for a lot of uh, sculptures and water features, so we took a picture of a few that we saw. This one was kind of fun. People were sitting in, in them and playing around, and they were kind of cool. That's water? Yeah. The first one was. The second one was. Yeah, that, that's not water. That's just oh. painted grass or yeah. kind of like a concrete. Yeah. One, before, yeah. Yeah. one before is a fountain. Yeah. yeah. Just water came yeah. out all over the place. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Uh, so we decided to go over to the, after we're walking, going through all these places, uh, we're going over to the Adelaide Botanical Gardens. And of course, this is a conservatory. And we just fell in love with this big silver palm. Now, one thing is we're walking through the botanical gardens, we're saying, guys, this is like being at home. And I thought, well, wait a minute, of course. Now, Adelaide has the, where I live in Santa Cruz, or we live in Santa Cruz, and the temperature is very hot and very dry during the summertime. The climate, and they get about 19 inches of rain, the climate in Adelaide is exactly the same. And most of the plants you see, including a lot of plants planted around here, originally came from Australia. They happen to be the ones that do very best, the best in Southern California, because it's the same climate. So I say, guys, it's just like being home. I mean, we have lantana down here, and oh gosh, all kinds of things. But it's a really neat botanical garden. This is the main rose garden. As you can see, they like to do things in, you know, mass plantings, but just small mass plantings with different colors. But all the beds have the grass pathways in the. One problem is when you want to get to one point to another, you're not sure how to get there. It's kind of like a maze. <laughs> this in the background, which is a great looking building, this is the Rainforest Conservatory. And you can see they like to use a lot of arches. Once what again. The, what is this garden called? This is the Adelaide Botanical Gardens. Oh, okay, thank you. And you'll see, we'll come back to it a little bit later here. Uh, mass plantings, once again. This is the city of Adelaide, and you'll see some more pictures of that later. This is the old garden rose section. Once again, a lot of teas and chinas. They grow exceptionally well, just like they do where I live. We live. Once again, more arches. Once again, the different plantings, grassways. They had this unusual sculpture. This is called Dead Horse. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I think that was the head up here or something. And that's the entrance into the uh, uh, Rainforest Conservatory. Uh, next day was uh, mine and Steve's ninth wedding anniversary. So we took a, a little tram down through town and went to uh, the city of Glenick. Unfortunately, the, the weather wasn't real nice that day. This is the best picture we got of the beach, but the sand was nice and white, and we went around and, and picked up seashells and stuff like that, so it was, it was really a fun day for us. And then that evening, we had mentioned to several people at the convention that it was our anniversary, so everybody, all 30, 30 people we told, joined us for dinner that night, which was, made it really special. 
Okay, the next day we went out to back to the Adelaide Botanical Gardens, which by the way has about 5,000 roses there. And uh, this is the first annual um, rose trials. Now one thing I'll mention about the roses, and we, we talked about earlier about earth kind roses in a way, um, Adelaide is under a severe drought. They are only allowed to water the roses once a week. Well, basically, even though you know, Earth kind would go further, and I'm sure eventually they can, they weaned the roses off of watering. And I'll show you some pictures of some of them. Uh, this is Kelvin Tremper, who uh, was the president of the local society there, along with Dean Springer, and the uh, gentleman here is Ian Spriggs. And I'll mention him a little bit later on. So, as you see the attire here, um, yeah. with the hats and all that, and everybody's covered up. Well, one thing about Adelaide, it's the thinnest part of the ozone layer is right overhead. The UV radiation in this area is intense. So we were told we better cover up and make sure we had hats and sunglasses and whatever. So here's the judges. So this is this look like judges? <laughs> when you go to an international roast trial, believe me, it's all suits, ties, dresses for the ladies. Not here. <laughs> And believe me, for good reason, it was about 96 degrees or 97. So here we're getting ready to take off. And we had about uh, 37 roses to uh, judge. And this is Susie with her team. Uh, it's uh, Bruce Chapman, who's a hybridizer from yeah, New Zealand or Australia, I can't remember, one of the two. And uh, this is Mary Jane, she's also from the United States. Here's me with my team. Uh, this is Peter Elliott, who at that time was the president of New Zealand. Yeah. Where's your hat? I didn't have one on either. And I you know what? Uh, actually, I came in and I was going to wear my suit, and I realized I don't need the coat, so I just took the coat and the tie off. And uh, I'm one of these weird people. I don't wear hats. I don't wear sunglasses. I never have. What can I say? You wear sunblock? Sunscreen? No? Look at the look on the face. Believe me, we've had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I umpire, and um, last Sunday was the first time I put on sunscreen because it was about 103 yes. degrees out there, and the sun was hitting me right in the face. So I did. I do have it. I did put it on that one time, but while I'm there, one time. no. What? <laughs> you know, I, what can I say? They don't spray it all, do they, for the... No, now these, uh, the roses, I guess like I'll show you up here, but they don't spray, they water once a week. And so I'll just show you a few of the roses, and you can see the foliage. Look at the I brought a little bug along. I was going to say, where's Baldo? But look at the foliage. No spraying, and no once a week of water, and this, once again, it's close, around 100 degrees. Shame, I, this picture wasn't there as clear, but you can see the beautiful foliage. This was my favorite. Uh, I just love this kind of mottled, speckled rose. But look at all the aphids. Oh my uh, lots and lots of aphids. And they got big aphids there. <laughs> you think you're in Texas. Once again, look how healthy this plant is. Once again, water once a week. So, you know, roses can be weaned off of rose water. You can do it. It just takes a little time. And earth kind has proved that. As long as you got the mulch. See the mulch down there? Yeah. Yeah. It's the thick, believe me. And once again, you can see a lot of aphids on here, too. The secrets in the mulch. Oh. Now, now, the next day we... Oh, that's okay. Yeah, the next day we went to... We judged the um, Rose Society of South... Austra Southern... No, South Australia. Rose Show in uh, Burnside. And this was the sage set up here. And you know, it's unfortunate because the lighting was very poor. I couldn't get a really good picture. But I loved it. I thought, you know, here it is. They had the buckets with full of roses with a clear tube going down to the one underneath. And I thought, that, you know, that is really a great this idea. Is from the sea, sea yeah. Sea yeah. Sea yeah. Very curious. Um, now, anybody has ever heard of David Rustin? Yeah. Okay, David Rustin was there. David Rustin, for those who don't know, he does arrangements and he does nothing small. <laughs> the man is in his upper 80s. And he's still going strong and he made this arrangement for the uh, entrance. 
this was a winning uh, arrangement for the whole show, and this was from a first-time person, a novice. There they have their, people are classified, they have C, which is novice. I mean, they haven't won anything. B is the middle stage of exhibiting, and A is the top. Well, this was a C-rated person who won the arrangement. Now, you can probably can't see the picture as much. This is how they put in their three old garden roses. And what I like is their specialty here. See, they bring their own bottles, and they're all beer bottles. <laughs> so, and they do one per bottle, and they go from front to back. So that's how the exhibits are set up. So I thought, you know what, I can handle this hobby. I'll help get these bottles empty for them. No problem. Australia has awesome beers, by the way, outside of great wines. I didn't find a beer or a wine I didn't like. I love it. This is uh, just... Just baskets, these are like this one here, they're, they're all in orchid tubes and they're all laid down in here. They hide them. And it's just like you go out in your garden and you just pick a whole bunch of old garden roses and just put them right there. It's beautiful. They're big on bowls. They have probably out of 70 classes, 30 of them seem to be bowls. So uh, you'll see it, a lot of bowls with just different collections. But I'll tell you what, I don't know if. We, we are doing something wrong. No sooner than they open up the doors, look at all the people that piled in there. Plus they're waiting out the door. You cannot walk around in this room. This is the public. And they're paying good money to get into it. These people are paying upwards to about, I think it's about 10 bucks a person, just to get in to see this row show. And we couldn't budge. I said, God, what's, what are we doing wrong? Wow. Wow. This was a grand champion of all the whole shows, Brass Band. Brass Band does very well there. This is a Plymouth Gold, one that I happen to really, really love. Plymouth Gold. It's a Floribunda. Now this is another one that is another one of our absolute favorites. This is all the same rose. This is Gold Bunny, which is also called Gold Badge in the United States. But look at the bowls. And we judge this class, yeah. yeah. How big are these bowls? Four inches. They must yeah, be four deep. inches. Yeah, they're, they're not very oh. big. And what do they put, what do they hold the roses in? Oasis. Oh, okay, good. Now, right after the show, we had a tea. And this is the governor of uh, South Australia, um, Kevin uh, Scarce, and that's his wife, Catherine. She's the patroness for the society. So we had a great time, really nice people. He's military, you know, a naval officer, and he's the most non-political person, or like a governor that you would ever want to meet. He was so down to earth, he was a great guy. Yeah. yeah. After the show, uh, we got on a little <laughs> bus ride and we went up to Mount Lofty. Now I think on a really clear day, this would have been spectacular because what you see here is all of Adelaide, and then behind that is the ocean. Um, it, I mean, it was nice, but it would have been much prettier if it had been a clear day. And don't start yet. On the way, on the way down, uh, we got back in the bus, and the bus driver said, uh, uh, "I'm going to take the old road down because if we're lucky, and I'm not guaranteeing anything, maybe we'll see a koala." So about this time, Steve said, "Oh, you mean here and over there and over there?" And so we only had a half a bus, so the driver pulled over. And we have a mama and a baby. Oh. We have daddy. Oh. And then a couple others. Oh. This one was only about 12. Steve climbed down this embankment. And this one is only maybe about 12 feet up in the yeah. tree. Oh. And you kind of want to pet them, but take a look at those claws. <laughs> it was fabulous. We were so excited. We got back to the hotel and we told some of the natives. They said, we've never seen a koala in the wild. So that was really, it was really, really special. Six. Yeah, so it's not six of them. Uh, it, was, it was wonderful. Uh, that evening they had a really nice uh, banquet, and this is Glennis and Doug Haynes, and they're also uh, from Australia. She's the current president of the Australia Rose Society, and she was also Miss Universe South in Africa. Yeah, for South Africa, 1972, I think. So really nice couple. We really enjoyed meeting them. Next is our... You'll see Steve's got things spelled incorrectly, and that's because that's the way they pronounce it. It's Melbourne. So our first, this was when we went into Melbourne. And you can take, you 
can take a, uh, a free bus uh, trip around town just to get familiarized with everything. And this is the visitor center. This is the train station and what we thought was really interesting is you have the old architecture mixed with the new architecture. This is the uh, Yarrow River, just really kind of pretty. And then again, they have some really interesting sculptures. I'm not really sure exactly what that was, but. <coughs> oh, when we were over at, uh, in Adelaide, I asked, okay, what rose gardens in these cities do we have to see? I mean, they're must. Almost everybody agreed, they said, you have to see the rose garden in Werribee. Now, Werribee is about a 20-minute uh, train ride uh, out of Melbourne. And so we arrived there because we had to go to the train and we had to take a bus out in the middle of nowhere. Now, to really appreciate the park, and the Victoria Road State Rose Garden is its formal name, is you have to look at it from up above. Okay, this is a, like a Tudor rose. As you can see, there's like you'll see in close up here, arches, there's a gazebo here in the center, mass plantings here, and you can see all the petals. This is the main rose garden. This rose garden over here looks like a, a bloom that's not quite open yet. This is the Australian exhibitors, I mean Australian hybridizers uh, garden. And this little bud is appropriately the test garden. <laughs> So here we arrive and we have climbing gold bunny. How can you not love this? I always wondered, uh, you know, I always like to see how people put in labels on roses because, you know, they don't last very long. Well, they take bricks and they just engrave right into it. So I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know too many people want to go dig those things up. Now, all around the outer part of the petals, they have these uh, posts. And they have chains and ropes, and they train roses along each one of them. So that makes out the outer part of the petals. Uh, that's, um, oh gosh, uh, blossom time. There is the gazebo in the center. And each of the petals, as they come into the center, they have standards on each side. So as you walk out, you'll see that they take advantage of every type of uh, way of showing roses, weeping standards. Uh, once again, we have the mass beds, arches, like you can see here. Once again, some more low mass plantings, pillars. I got them there. And you can just see the, you know, it's quite spread out, surprisingly. You know, there's, a, uh, there's also about 5,000 roses in this garden, by the way. Now, this is the Australian hybridizers. Uh, garden, so you can see that they're all the way around, and you can see the sky's getting a little dark up there. Yes. Now we were up on a mound. This is that once again the main rose garden. Looking back at it now, by the time we got from here to there, it opened up on us, <laughs> and we did not take an umbrella. <laughs> Luckily there the uh, rain doesn't go for very long so we stayed underneath that arch until it got to wire log then it started dripping so we moved to another area and then it would stop raining for a little bit so we'd keep on walking and I'm snapping pictures of all the roses in between and then we will go to another arch or another covered thing you know and of course most of the people ended up going over to the gazebo over there and so um, yeah, it was kind of fun dodging the uh, all the rain you can see after the rain yeah, very good, brass band. Like I said, it does wonderful there. Another, there's one of the center plantings, you can see. That's probably gold bunny again. Now these are some of the uh, Australian hybridizers, roses. Ian Spriggs, I showed earlier, this is his rose, Annie Song. Mm. Australia Felix, uh, probably their be most renowned hybridizer is Alistair Clark. He hybridized all kinds of roses, and this is one of his lower growing ones. Some call it a polyantha, and in others it's a shrub. April Hammer, beautiful rose, nice center. Uh, let's talk about uh, exhibiting here. I wanna see if I can get my hands on it. I showed you that floor one earlier. Uh, City of Adelaide, big blooms. I mean, these are about, you know, about like this. 
on a short compact bush that's very disease resistant. Uh, one of Nancy Hayward, uh, this is one of Alistair Clark's. The story on that is Nancy Hayward was a well-known uh, garden writer. And so he named the rose after her, but she hated singles. <laughs> so she wasn't sure if he liked her or not. Probably the most popular one there is Lorraine Lee. You see this all over the place. Now most Alistair Clark's roses have this as a base, Rosa Gigantia. Gigantia means very big. And on most of his roses are. They're huge climbers or shrubs. In the same area, across, kind of like across the road, is uh, the open range zoo. So before we headed back, we decided we'd go over to the zoo. Everything is open. You can walk around or you can take a tram or whatever. It was just beautiful. I kind of have a little love for these little guys, the meerkats. We stood there for about a half an hour and they were just posing for pictures. I must have taken 15, 20 pictures of these guys. Now, this was, this was interesting. There was a path to walk down to see the emus, but they just fed them and they get quite aggressive when they eat. And they were like running around pretty close to us. And I, at one point I said, come on, let's get out of here. Because, I mean, they're quite tall. <laughs> We just, we took a, a this was part of the tram ride, and we went around and just, I was just shooting pictures of whatever, because I just thought it was just a neat place. We had a great time there. This is probably the most beautiful place on earth, Hobart, Tasmania. I would go back there and spend weeks, because I just thought of Australia, it was probably one of the most beautiful places. I got a kick out of this, because every place you'd go in Australia, they had the beagles sniffing your bags because there was things you weren't allowed to bring in. So I, I told the handler, I said, I've, you know, I've got some granola with me. And he says, oh, that's okay. I said, let's hit the dog and find it. So I put my bag on the ground, and he went right to, uh, right to it. Oh, they're characters. They, granola. Oh. Yeah. You're not supposed to bring granola. No, you can't. No food. You can't. Certain food you can, like fresh fruit you can't bring in and stuff. But trail mix, you know, candy, whatever, that's fine. They're mostly sniffing for food. Yeah. And drugs. And drugs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And drugs. Um, when Steve and I got to the hotel, we we were about three blocks away from uh, the ocean, so we walked down there. I, what can I say? This was just unbelievable. And they have a lot of uh, sculptures everywhere in the country. But isn't that neat? Oh, there we go. Yeah. And we took this one because you can see back in the corner is the Jones is at the Jones Hotel. Henry Jones, right there. Oh. A lot of old buildings, and a, no, a, a drunken, admiral. drunken admiral. We ate dinner there one night just because I like the name. And, and again, just crazy sculptures everywhere. This one I hate. I didn't even want the picture in the presentation, but you know who liked this thing. But it used to be a fountain that doesn't work anymore, and they put tra people dump their trash. It's like a spaceship just landed. Pretty much. Yeah, into that 60s, come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I gotta remember to get this right. This is called Soldier's Walk. We are on our way to a garden. There's 520 trees planted on this path. And they were planted between uh, 1918 and 1919 to acknowledge uh, those who enlisted their service into the Great War of 1914 and 1918. And most of the soldiers were from the Hobart, Tasmania area. We don't, couldn't figure out exactly what this bird was, but we just thought it was quite pretty. Uh, no, it was an Eastern Rosella. Oh, I didn't mark it yes. down. Oh, we so you did find it. Okay. Eastern oh, Rosella. Wow. But I mean, again, the, up in the trees, just, oh, just there. They're just beautiful. Is Tasmanian Island? Yes. Yes. It's part of Australia. Yeah. It's at the very southern part. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's a lot cooler, and it's not as bad on there. Uh, at the end of the trail there, we went to the Royal Tasmanian Botanical Gardens. As you can see, they're celebrating 190 years. Now, it's, can you name too many things here in the United States that are 190 years old, let alone that are still celebrating? Uh, no. That's what blows me away when I go to travel around other countries. But we love this garden. It was just set out. Lots of little whimsical things all over the place. 
It's a nice little statue. We thought somebody was actually there working, and they weren't. <laughs> we did the first time. Yeah. <laughs> little ladybug. <laughs> and they really go into color and textures. I mean, it's just fabulous. Tasmanian tiger. There's the ladybugs in the background. Right there, there's three of them. Butterfly. Interesting sculpture. This is a water uh, feature from some well-known French artist. Couldn't tell you the name off the top of my head. But at the time we were there, um, as you'll see in a little bit, in a few minutes here, the roadies were all out. I mean, beautiful. And this was in the Japanese garden. And of course, you can't have to go to you know, Australia. You have to see Protea or you know Banksia. Now we uh, went out and sat on the. Uh, balcony of the gift shop they have a nice little cafe there so we got a, a glass of their local wine by the way Tasmania makes some excellent Pinot Noirs excellent Pinot Noirs I was surprised but then I thought about the climate they're very similar to the wine growing areas that we have here so this is a floral clock it's actually the second one we saw and this actually works so you could tell what time we were there it would look like about oh, what about 340 but I was just looking there, we're out here looking over the gardens in the bay. I only threw this in because this used to be the zoo, and this is the site where the last uh, Tasmanian tiger died in captivity. Now, the Rose Garden, uh, unfortunately, because it was a little cooler, it wasn't quite in bloom yet. So, but then again, we're Rosarians. Do we care if there's blooms? It makes it better, but I like to look, we like to look at the architecture and everything too. So. Once again, the typical garden is a lot of mass beds, all one variety for each one, and usually around some central feature. Uh, there's some, uh, I think it's crab apples up here blooming in the background. So you can see a little bit of color starting to show through there, but not a particularly big garden. The one bloom that was there was Sir Harry Pilkington. I've always wanted to know what the name of this rose is because back many years ago when you had a only could exhibit Registered Roses, the old Rena Hugo. Oh. Well, I was working with uh, Slats Walton, and we came up on this class, and they had Spring Break, Sir Harry Pilkington, and something or other else. So we looked at it all and says, that's all Rena Hugo. What are they trying to pull on us? So I always wanted to see what the real Sir Harry Pilkington looked like. Next day we went, we took a, um, a tour to Port Arthur, and Port Arthur started out as a timber station in the 1830s. I got a little story, but I won't go on too long. It's really a neat place. Um, but it's best known as a penal colony. So from 1833 until about the 1850s, it housed some really, really nasty criminals. The, uh, the, the uh, this is here for part of my little story here. The peninsula in which Port Arthur is located is a naturally secure site being surrounded by water and it was rumored to be, <coughs> by the administration, to be shark infested and that way the, the convicts wouldn't try to escape. Um, the 90 foot wide isthmus of Eagle Neck was the only connection to the mainland and was fenced and guarded by, do by soldiers and half starved dogs. <laughs> Port Arthur was sold as an inescapable prison. Some prisoners were not discouraged and tried to escape. Here's my favorite part of the story. One of the most infamous and bizarre escape attempts was by George Billy Hunt. Billy disguised himself using a kangaroo hide and tried to flee across the neck. But the half-starved guards on duty tried to shoot him to supplement their meager rations. <laughs> when Billy noticed them sighting him, he threw off his disguise and surrendered, receiving 150 lashes. <laughs> oh, that was a great story. Uh, this is uh, in the main part of the prison. They kind of duplicated what the rooms actually look like back in the day. <laughs> Steve calls this one jailbird. <laughs> Most of the place has pretty much fallen down, but they've kept everything the way it was. These were the noisiest birds I have ever heard in my life. They're uh, yellow-winged black cockatoos, and they just would not shut up at all. Just, oh, there was a ton of them. Um, from Port Arthur, you could take just a little boat ride over to 
a, a real small island, which they called Isle of the Dead, and that's where all the convicts and the people that worked at the prison were buried. It's kind of creepy, but, but neat. <laughs> yeah. And this was coming back in. So you can see that the grounds are just spectacular, really, really beautiful. They had built uh, this garden with roses and all kinds of beautiful plantings, and the guards used to take care of it. It's something they took pride in. This was a church that they had that burnt down in uh, 1836. still there. But that, yeah, the, the, the sides are there, but the top is all gone. Okay. When we left, when we were heading back, we went through a town, and that's what it was called, was Do Town. And everybody had to name their house something with do in it. This one was just do it. It was a riot. Every single house had something with do in the name. It was, it was really kind of cute. And this is outside of Dew Town. This is the Tasmanian Arch. And this is the coast of the Tasman Sea, which, as you can see, is really, really beautiful. Next is Sydney. Oh, yeah. Opera House. And now, what's really amazing, I was so excited about seeing this because, you know, you, it's supposed to be spectacular. I hate to burst anybody's <laughs> bubble, but it really isn't that pretty. It's, uh, it's amazing because it's so big, but it wasn't, wasn't what I thought it would be. And this is seeing the uh, Opera House from our hotel window, so we were pretty close. Again, a fabulous architecture. Kids, school kids out on a... Uh, now this is the Sydney Bridge and you can actually walk across the, the arch part of it, but we chose not to do that. We took about 500 stairs up and we walked across the <coughs> flat part, was, which was more than enough for me, but you could just see forever up there. It was really, really lovely. Okay, right back of the Opera House is the Royal Botanical Gardens there in Sydney. In there, you can see there's the uh, bridge, and there's the back end of the uh, <coughs> opera house. There's a lot of these sc scarlet ibises all over the place, and they just kind of walk around with you. Yeah. Uh, of course, the thing about the botanical gardens, they have about 1,800 roses here. And of course, just our luck, it's a very large botanical garden. And the rose garden was at the far end. <laughs> So, I mean, this is after flying in, mind you, go to our hotel, throwing the stuff down and heading out on the streets. So, but they did have a, this is part of the, the herb garden. Another part of it. Now, I don't know, we get like this, but I have no idea. They have this big, uh, kind of like a conservatory with all these trees or whatever it is, and I have no idea what the sex plus death means. <laughs> it's just one of those things you had to take. Uh, I don't know. This is the Rose Garden, like I said, it has about 1,800 roses. It was just recently done about two years ago, so it hasn't really fully uh, grown, uh, matured. Oops. As you can see, they uh, typically have a lot of hanging plants. They have you know, under roses for underfooting, and they use a lot of mondo grass. It seems like all over Australia, Mondo grass was number one. This is a pergola, like I said, you know, you could see the wiring, and you could see, I don't know if you could see it, like the nails mm -hmm. that they have all along the top there trying to get these roses to grow up and over. But once again, fairly new, so they haven't had a chance to really grow in. Just looking back over here, there's a little center sitting area. Let's get mass pike now, bedding. Now this one had kind of a, a, a uh, landscape rose here with some hybrid teas in the middle. A couple of them, happy anniversary. Uh, that's, that was kind of neat. It was a low grown, yeah, great form. Uh, warm welcome. I just kind of like the color. I do like oranges, roses. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. There yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. And that's spectacular. Um, the next, I swear, we did nothing but either run or walk or something. But the following day, we went, uh, took a little um, fair. fair. Couldn't think of the word. Over to, this is Manly. And Manly is known on this particular site to have some of the best surfing in the world. That's part of Manly too. Again, the sculptures in the ocean or near the ocean. 
Yeah. I just thought that was cool. We took a walk and there was a whole bunch of these things embedded in the rocks. <laughs> this is kind of the quiet side of the, of the ocean, uh, the harbor side. They have a, a shark net up because uh, sometimes they so come. You can go swimming. So you can go swimming because sometimes they come close. But it was fun that we walked all the way around there. It was really pretty. Now that looks really nice. At night it's really pretty, yeah. Really pretty. Okay, again, again, Brisbane. This is Brisbane. Okay, we, we got there and uh, we want to go. There's a couple of botanical gardens there, but this is the one that was right there in the city called Queen's Park. But I was rather disappointed because it really was a park and what few roses they had, we found a, a couple of icebergs tucked away in the thing there. So this was not what we were expecting. We were expecting quite a large rose garden. Now I understand there is one, but it's way out of town. But, uh, so we decided to go ahead and take a walk around. But when we went over on the south side of the river though, we found these fabulous trellises. So they have bougainvillea and all kinds of things growing up and over. So what are the trellises made of? Uh, they look like they were uh, stainless, brushed stainless. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's all metal. Yes. All metal. Then, uh, as we go along there, even though you're right on the water, they created their own beach. It's kind of cool, you know. You're, the river's to the right. Here's the beach to the left. With sand and everything. With sand and everything, even a lifeguard. And you can see those trellises again on the back. Fascinating. When, when Steve and I planned our trip to Australia, he said to me, what, what do you really want to do when we go? And I said, I have to go to the Australia Zoo. It's something I want to do. I was always a Steve Irwin fan, and I said, that's, that's something I really want to do. So we took a, um, a small bus up there and uh, spent the day. It was really, really wonderful. Um, when you first walk in, they had this there, and it's rumored that that's where he's buried, but they say that the only person that knows for sure is his wife, Terry. Mm -hmm. Is this the goofiest looking duck you have ever <laughs> seen in your life? I thought, boy, this is unusual, so needless to say, had to take a picture of it. What's nice at the zoo, it's very interactive. You can pet the animals. So we were pet petting the kangaroos and the wallabies, and I also got to pet a koala, which was really neat. They're just really soft, so that was really kind of fun. Uh, one, one thing I think is really neat there is that um, they insist that the zookeepers that keep an eye on the tigers, they pretty much live with them. When the tigers lay down to take their nap, the zookeepers nap too. This is not a tame animal. He's very wild, but he has such a good relationship with his handler uh, that they, they nap together and everything. One unique thing about this zoo is that Steve Irwin always wanted, if you had a question to ask, he always wanted to make sure that you didn't have to do anything other than maybe turn around to find an employee. There's 600 employees at this zoo. Yeah, every time, it's true, every time we turned around, there was somebody that we could recognize, and you could ask them just about anything, and they were extremely knowledgeable. So you couldn't go without going to a croc show, so that was, that was pretty spectacular. Um, the next evening uh, was Steve's birthday. We had not only our anniversary, but Steve's birthday, and we found this really neat restaurant right on the water called Cha Cha Char, which I thought was kind of cool. Best meat I ever ate in my entire life. Oh, was, Best steaks we've ever oh, had. Oh, it was fabulous. Day. But this bridge was out there, and unfortunately, I didn't get a real clear picture of it, and I don't even know what the bridge was, but it was, I thought it was just a pretty picture. Uh, you just have to read what it says there, but uh, this was actually a bar. A what? It's a bar. They serve their beer, and their beer destroys uh, round soul, whatever that is, and cholesterol, and turns crops into tadpoles. <laughs> yeah, they'll do everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> after after that silly bar, um, we, we continued up the coast. Uh, this is the Gold Coast. We didn't make it as far up as uh, Great the Great Barrier Reef. We got as far as the Gold Coast, and uh, this is Noosa. And we took a, a little walk on here and had lunch in town. Really beautiful. Uh, they also took us to this 
tourist trap called Underwater World. But what was kind of cool about it is it was a plexiglass building and all the fish swam over the top of you and you walked in these little tunnels underneath. So of course the shark swam right over my head. A little too close for comfort. Oh wait, this is me. What? Oh, you got this part. No, 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 no. Hey. God, she, she gets so crappy. Well, the next day we, uh, what the locals call, skip the ditch and flew over to New Zealand. It's, it's only about a three hour flight. And we started off down here in uh, Christchurch, and it worked our way up to the northern part of the southern island. Then we took the ferry across to Wellington and then hit all the gardens up here, all the way up and then to Oakland, which is where we flew out of. We were picked up by uh, Don Eagle, who's the current president of the New Zealand Rose Society. And uh, she was our host and taxi driver for about four days, which was really wow. wonderful. Um, she took us up here, which was the uh, Christchurch gondola, which is perched on top of Mount Cavendish, which is a crater. And it takes you up about 1,500 feet to the top, where you can see everywhere. This is Dawn. Um, see all of Christchurch. Um, it, it was just, the site was just beautiful. This is Littleton Harbor, and probably one of the most fabulous sunsets coming up here. <coughs> This is Josh. It's it's um, Don's dog, who was just my best buddy. <laughs> okay, this is Don's yard. Uh, Don Eagle, you may know of Don and Barry Eagle. Uh, Barry, they wrote several books on miniature roses. And Barry passed away a few years back, but uh, and they, I think their nursery is Southern Cross. I think it was Southern Cross Nurseries. And this is her yard. Unfortunately, once again, you can see the roses are just not quite in bloom, but the roadies are still going crazy. It was much colder there than Australia. Yeah, it was very much colder. cool. Because you're closer to Antarctica. Uh, one of the first gardens we went to was Mona Vale. And as you can see, you can kind of see the map here, the layout. The uh, gardens actually had more bloom on it than I thought. Um, once again, mass beds. But all these roses here are mostly old garden roses and David Austin's. And they tend to have more of one plant, or maybe two, not so much mass plantings in this section. Over here on this part, these are more mass plantings of the same rows. And uh, across the house here, I thought they kind of built kind of an unusual trellis here to try to get the climbers to go up over there. Is that these, concrete, Steve? Yeah, those are, that's concrete, yeah. It's in uh, just wrought iron. These are all uh, tea roses, madam. Uh, Isaac Schwartz and all that. Once again, more of the mass plantings. I don't know why they do that. They, they have li they like arches, and they have arches that go nowhere. But they like arches, so they plant roses up over the arches. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the roadies were awesome. One of my favorite pictures. This is the River Avon runs right through Christchurch, right there, and this is still Montevale. And there's a couple of roses, there's Christopher Marlowe, of course Gertrude Jekyll. We went into town, and this is Christ Church. So two words, not Christ Church, but Christ Church. And of course, you have to go to a church, because you have to go see the rose window, right? Fabulous church. And this is real, a little side. I felt really weird. We decided to have lunch here, and there was a little cafeteria on the side, out of the main, this main, whatever they call this part of the building, but still within the church. And they served beer. <laughs> <laughs> now I felt really weird having a nice. I think we had a quiche. They love quiche. That's, it's like every meal is quiche. But I had a beer with my quiche, and it felt really weird being in church doing that. <laughs> Your prayers were answered. My prayers were answered. <laughs> and it was a good beer, too. It was a local beer. After that, we went over to the Christchurch Botanical Gardens. And the rose garden over there is a little smaller than the other one. Um, let's see. It's only got about 1,200 bushes and about 250 varieties. Once again, more mass plantings. And there's Don and Susie. 
Once again, mass bed plantings, the different roses. Here they feature a lot of roses of Sam McGreedy, who's a local. You know, he lives in Oakland. And so here's Nobelio's Chardonnay. Uh, it is heard that uh, he created this rose. Nobello, Nobello is a local winery. And so every year for his royalty, he gets a case of, of Chardonnay. If I'm not Sam, does like wine. I, Here's a climber, Arrowtown. Another one of Sam's, Ginger Rogers. And of course, I can't go anywhere. Anybody knows me. There's a cemetery. Stop! Yes. And of course, I'm not. Uh, that's, you got it. Uh, you, my, my whole thing is the sculpture architecture. And this, of course, is relief down. So the carvings were fabulous. I found a lot of them. You find them mostly in the older ones, older cemeteries. <laughs> This is just some of the countryside around uh, New Zealand, and because we live in brown country, seeing so much green was fabulous, totally refreshing. Oh, wow. And I, I honestly think there are more cows and more sheep in New Zealand than there are people, because yeah. most of the hillsides yeah. look like this. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And deer. And deer, yeah, and deer are, deer. They're, not, they're not, uh, yeah, they're raised, they're not wild. They raise deer, which is kind of, unusual. This was, we had gone and done a little bit of wine tasting when Don was taking us around and this was just kind of the front of a, of a winery which is really kind of pretty. And then we drove down the coast and as you can see lots of birds and we've got uh, the seals and it was just really, really, really pretty. Very, very black sand because it's very volcanic around that area. And then some uh, grapes with the snow behind it. <laughs> it was it was just spectacular. How clear the water is. And this is picked in where we ended up um, leaving, but not this day, to go across to the North <laughs> Island. And this was from our hotel room. It's just I just thought it was just really a quaint little place, a neat little picture. Of course, roses are big all over. You know, where we go in Australia or New Zealand, especially New Zealand, you can't help but see roses. This whole house, and if you can almost flip flop it, it was solid roses around the whole front, going all the way up to the gables, all the way through the front yard, everything. It was just absolutely gorgeous. We went to a winery, and they have roses there too. There's Lamarck growing up and over there. This was on top of a, a seat. This is Lady Climbing Lady Hillington. Some of the best looking uh, Lady Hillington I've ever seen in my life. I you know I have it, it's always been kind of eh, eh, eh. The bush doesn't do so well, the climber's better, but the color was so intense on this. And fragrant. And very fragrant. Oh, this was beautiful. It's just like one of those women I sit underneath it. And this is a floor button called Sweet Perfume, and it has a really nice perfume. Once again, you see there's no yard here, right? See, that yard is only that wide. This is the road, okay? But they gotta have roses. <laughs> now, one of the places uh, uh, Don wanted to take me to is the largest seller of roses in uh, New Zealand. This is Tasman Bay Roses. I won't even try to tell you the name of the town. It's like Mat Matiwea or something like that. They have 3,600 roses about 1,200 varieties, and they offer for sale all 26, all 3,600, uh, all 1,200 varieties. Now, when you first go in, this is the parking lot, and these are all old ramblers, um, you know, once blooming ramblers. There's uh, some like May Queen is in there, and there's some uh, hybrid musks in here, and this supposedly had a had a support at one time, but. Uh, they, they said that they, they think they can, if you cut these posts, it'll still stay up. But you can see how thick and how old these are. Unlike the other gardens now, they do have a lot of mass bed plantings. And they have them up and down and all over, but they are not the same variety. So you have one rose bed, you may have 20 different varieties in it. And the thing about this garden is, it is a it's set up like a garden. It's not set up like a nursery. You don't even realize it's a nursery until you go to certain parts. 
So every one of these is, if they need to get some more cuttings, they come over here, take them off the plant and go. But no matter where you went, it's like, oh my gosh, another scene. And of course, now you can see there's a lot of bloom here. I took a lot of photos here. This old shack was being taken over by roses. Once again, all different types of treatments, up, sideways, whichever. Once again, I mean, I, I could have spent a week here and yes, still not take yes, enough photos. <laughs> now, in New Zealand, they have this really weird disease. It's a fungus disease. It's called silver leaf. This is the plant when it's healthy. This is the plant when it's not healthy. Silver leaf just makes it kind of a silver color and it makes it very dull. And it is a fungal disease, so they, they, they're more worried about, you know, from cutting infected, you know, at least your clippers or sutures going one through the other that spreads it. I don't know, but I'm, we don't have it. I hope we never see it. Uh, this is George. Uh, George took over. He's one of the two sons who <coughs> took over for uh, their father and uh, their parents, Nigel uh, and uh, what was Mary. Mary. Yeah. Lovely couple. They were, you know, they were up in the almost close to 90. And we, they said, okay, well, you're here at the right time because you have to go and have afternoon tea with my parents. Oh, and oh, she so wanted, sweet. she made us sit down, she was dressed, you know, very cookies. formal, was formal, brought us cookies. Oh, it was delightful. So we had to kick back and really enjoy it, but it was a great time, great people. And once again, you see, no matter where you go. Wow. Now, it was getting a little late, and they were saying, oh, you know what, let's forget about the rest of the guards, are early. there's not much there, it's just kind of like a mishmash or whatever. And I says, yeah, right, I'll bet. The bottom line is they wanted him to get me out of there because we still had a long drive to get back home. So this is like one of the gardens that was in really lousy shape. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one that was really lousy shape. Yeah. I didn't have a chance to go into any of these to take photos of the roses. But uh, you can see it just almost looks like a big park. It doesn't look like a nursery. I hear some of the roses we saw there. Mawara. I'm not sure what that means over there, but this has got really thick petals. It's kind of an interesting yeah. rose. I took this one just so people can see Rosa Saracia and Terracantha. It's four petals. One, two, well, one, two, three, four. That's one big petal. Actually, this is the rose that was taking down that shack. So, keeps it. Great shrub rose there. Really fragrant. Oh. oh As I was walking over by the office, I said, oh, I love this. I love the car yeah. Yeah. with the rows and whatever. I mean, this is just one of their packing sheds. And, uh, uh, you're staying, I know. <laughs> this is Don and Steve. The night we were getting ready to leave, they were toasting each other. We thanked her for her time and taking us around. She was just delightful. Next day, we headed over to the North Island, which is a three-hour ferry ride, and I will, without going into graphic detail, will tell you once we hit this rough water, Steve didn't see me for the rest of the trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was not pretty. So when we landed, when we actually got to the North Island in uh, Wellington, it was going to be the only time we were going to rent a car. So uh, I was preparing myself for Steve driving on the left-hand side of the road instead of the right. And so we went up to the window to, to get a vehicle, and the woman said, where are you going, and how long, and all this. And she said, well, if you can have this car back up to the airport within the next three days, I'll give it to you for $6 a day. <laughs> Sold, got a nice little, you know, small little SUV, and... It was an upgrade, too. It was great. $6. It's like, yeah, we'll have it to the airport in time. No problem. How much was gas? So, so it was pretty cool. Five. 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 Okay, one of the first guards we went to, this is in Palmerston North, or Palmy North as they call it. It's the Mackenzie Rose Garden. Now, there's about, uh, let's see, about 5,000 roses in here again, but only about 100 varieties. But you can see the layout of the map here, uh, how it just kind of splays out over this kind of little central area. 
as you can see, this rose garden is spaced out. It's not real tight. They make a lot of use so you can walk all the way around. And once again, the beds, one variety. Here's some of it that was in bloom. It was just starting to come into bloom. So we have this nice bed. Can't remember what rose that one is. But once again, you can see that they have uh, like a pillars along the sides here and these spokes that go out, radiate out from the center. Some more of the mass beds and some of the pergolas they have there. Uh, just a lot of people are there. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were there, uh, there was a wedding going on and Susie wouldn't let me get anywhere near the roses around the edges of it. And uh, we were looking at this kind of house. They have a nice little chuckle because I don't know if you can see, but this bride's about a half a head taller than the bride, the groom. So we were looking at it, and so it happened that there was a rose bed nearby there, and uh, it was called Wise Women, and I was really wondering if that bride was really wise. She had on heels. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. Oh, look. Oh, Again, so, I mean, it, it, could you ask for anything more beautiful than that? I mean, just driving and seeing all that country was just absolutely spectacular. This is, let's see if I can butcher this, this is Mount Ruapehu, which was actually in Lord of the Rings, and it's a volcano that last erupted in 1995. Did you see any hobbits? No hobbits. No hobbits. <laughs> uh, as we were going through there, this is a Tarangi, and this is the self-proclaimed fly fishing capital of the world. Now, I love to fish, and I wish I had time to actually fish. But when you have rivers like this, uh, I could definitely see me pulling a five pound trout out of that. Now this is uh, Lake Tapu. Now, how many have been to uh, like Crater Lake? Okay, you know that there's the uh, Wizard Island in the center? Yes. This, from here, all the way across over there, used to be a volcano. Same with Crater Lake. It exploded. And when it exploded, it filled back up with water. This is the dome coming back up, which is what Wizard Island is. So this is a large volcano. Wow. Whoa. Oh, is that pretty? This is Hookah Falls, and I mean, it, the water looks really pretty, but I will tell you it was almost a vivid green with all the, I assume, chemicals or the minerals in the water. It was just vibrant green. And this was um, Craters of the Moon. Uh, a lot of thermals around there, and you could actually walk all the way around it, which was kind of interesting. Was it sulfur smelling? A little bit, but not real bad. You didn't go to Rota Ruin. Yes, we did. Yeah. That was after this. Yeah, that was, after, yeah. Yeah, that was really bad. Uh, of course, this is some uh, mud fumaroles. Now, when we were over at Don's house, we noticed everything was tacked down. And I say, and, uh, why does you have everything tacked down? Do you have earthquakes here? She laughed, and she says, you know, we are at the southern part of the Pacific Rim. We have earthquakes all the time. She says, as a matter of fact, if it isn't at least a 6.0, we don't even notice them. <laughs> now that was a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Susie. I had to have that. We were going through town and saw this building. Susie says, come on, stop, I gotta take a picture. I think this is one of the few times I almost got myself in trouble driving. She wanted me to stop. Okay, then we head, head over back towards the coast there of the Te uh, Amuwa, Awa Mutu Rose Gardens. They, came, they were built in 69. As you can see once again, mass bed plantings. Some of them have two varieties, some have one. A little sculpture. Once again, they all seem to have some sort of water feature around the middle. A little observation deck here where you can look over the roses. And the local rose society actually was evaluating some roses, so they were busy doing that while we were there. But once again, you can see, you know, really spread out. Once again, a lot of roses from Sam McGree. Here's Catherine McGree. I really like this rose. It was great color. Land of the long white cloud, which is in America we call it full sail, which is a sport in New Zealand. Te Amamutu Centennial. Then on our last day there, we headed over to the Oakland Botanical Gardens. Huge gardens and all kinds of different uh, plants and bloom. This is an entrance into the Rose Garden. In the little thing 
here, you can see uh, roses growing up and over the building here and some other plantings of uh, perennials and annuals. Some old garden roses here, a lot of um, gallicas in this bed with some albas that were just blooming. They had several islands, once again, uh, you know, arches with roses, different parts. You know, once again, black mondo grass here for the edging. Roses, you know, going little trellises here. So once again, mass beds, you know, once again, one big color, one big color, one big color. They had several ponds and they had the roses interplanted among all the other annuals and perennials. Let's look back over that one part portion of the roses. <coughs> Plenty of ducks, they love it there. Once again, roses planted all the way around. This was supposedly the New Zealand garden and they supposedly featured all kinds of plants from New Zealand. Unfortunately, I, oops, as I looked through the roses here, I realized none of them were from New Zealand hybridizers. So after we were leaving, I could talk to the head curator and said, you know, you should change these out to at least have New Zealand hybridizers. <laughs> some of these are from J&T and some others. Here's a few of this little patio rose, a little Miss Muffet. Fond memories. Patio honey. Now, uh, Christopher out of um, England created a whole series of climbing roses. He actually wrote a book on climbing roses. And a lot of them are actually like climbing miniatures. And most of them are called patio something. So there's patio princess, here's patio honey. As you can see, it's a, and those blooms are only about two inches across. So we decided that uh, back end of our trip to spend a few days in Tahiti. And this was just to be to relax and do nothing. For those of you who know my husband, that is impossible. <laughs> yes. um, oh. also, also, there are no roses in Tahiti. So we're not going to bore you with a lot of pictures. And I can't roses. write off my taxes. Now, <laughs> this was on the property that we stayed on. I just thought it was an awesome palm. Beautiful. Well, this is on the main island. We're in Papayate. This is a fan palm. This was uh, out, out in front of uh, our hotel. And contrary to popular belief, this is not a... Uh, an, a uh, Tahiti is not a beach. It's not a beach yeah. island. It's a lagoon island, so there's not very many beaches. But we happened to stay at a place that had a beautiful black beach. Very clear water. Mm. This was just, again, a waterfall in our hotel area. And plumerias everywhere. They were just really, really pretty. Really, really pretty. Oh, just that's a great picture. Isn't that a great picture? Nice. Yeah, gorgeous. The sun says we we went out. There's a uh, a, a seawall uh, right about where this picture is taken. So we go out down there every night with a glass of wine, and we must have taken probably 20 or 30 sunset pictures, and they're all different, all of them. And so we did that every night. Uh, the following day we walked down. This is just into town. We decided to go have some lunch and uh, wander around. And what's really interesting in Tahiti is everything is built up on the hillsides. There's only just a few main highways or roads and everything's built up into the hillside. We just happen to really like this church. And then we took a, a, a ferry over to Morea one of the days that we were there. And as you can see there, the sand is white. This is about as big of a beach as you'll ever find. Yeah, and also, oh, I have to, have to point out another thing. I was, I was sticking my feet in the water, and we're just looking around, and I looked down, and within maybe three feet of me was a uh, manta. Ma manta ray. So I said, Steve, grab the camera, grab the camera. Well, we had put our shoes and the camera and such on the sand for a while because we were kind of dipping our toes in the water. Well, apparently a grain of sand got stuck in the camera and it jammed. Oh. So I missed my Kodak moment. <laughs> but we got the camera working. Yeah, we did. <laughs> At our last day, we went up um, to uh, Le uh, Rendezvous. No, no, Belvedere. No, Belvedere. It's about 1,600 feet above. Now, to get here was quite an adventure. It's a one-lane road. And I don't know if you'll see it in this picture so much, maybe the next one. But that's a harbor, a Papayete. 
there's the road, okay? And the whole road was this way, and then they, they pick you up, and they take you up, there's a good thing, because there's no way I'd drive this. And no matter where you go, you go that far off, you're down a thousand feet. Oh, it's it was just scary. scary. It was scary. But what a great view. <laughs> this is a picture of us. That's Morarea, by the way, in the background, and, and uh, there was a fire going on at the same time. And they just let it burn out. Um, so later on, the next day, we had a flight left at 10 o'clock at night. So we decided to do the island tour. Now, the island is only 43 miles around. And it was raining. First day we hit, there was a lot of rain. So we're going around there, and they say, hey, we got all these fern grottoes. You want to go? And I said, sure, let's go. So I jump out of the van, and nobody else does. <laughs> now, when they got over to the uh, Paul Gauguin Museum, I noticed it was a botanical garden next door. So everybody went in there. I went this way. It was still raining, remember. But this is a really interesting garden. It's uh, Johnson, is the uh, gentleman who was a missionary, who put this in. It's basically a swamp botanical gardens. It's all swampy over here, here and here. <coughs> it was fascinating. And at the end, you know, we there was the last waterfall. Uh -oh. Blow a hole. Yeah, it got all wet. And there's our probably the last picture that we had on our way before we hit the airport. So on to our next trip. <laughs> Any, any questions? Are you going to China? Yes. Oh, April. Oh. Yeah, the World Federation has a meeting in, uh, outside of Shanghai. Oh, that's Shanghai, tough. and there's a post trip over to the Rose Gardens in Beijing. Oh. It's a tough life, but somebody has to do it. Spain, 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 but we're also then we're going to go on to probably Spain and Portugal. Oh, okay. And yeah, no, Italy. Oh, yeah. <laughs>